welcome to today's video, and in today's video, I'll be discussing the recent New Mexico's first district, um, special election that, um, that came, so, and I'll be discussing why it's sort of, um, writing on the wall, I guess, for Democrats, and why they should be worried about 2022, why they probably won't win the House in 2022, and why it's, it's writing on the wall, um, but why, why they will likely be screwed in 2022, um, so let's go get started by looking um, at the normal results. Here's a special election. Let's go get started by taking a look at the special election results. Um, Melanie Stansbury. I mean, like this at first, this looks like a very promising sign um, for the Democrat. Stansbury won by 24.6%, as opposed to um, as opposed to on the regular um, election, I guess, where Holland won by 16.4%. So it was, like, significantly larger. It was a significantly larger margin of victory um, for the Democratic Party in, in this district in the special election. However, I'll be discussing why it is not actually great for them. So first off, we have to look at um, third-party votes for Dunn and Manning. And like this, I guess you could say split, if that's really a split. I guess kind of just broke off chunks of the GOP vote. If you add these votes to Mark Moore's um, vote total, he ends up with 39.7%. Um, I mean, like, that's, that's still worse, yes. 39.7% is obviously worse than 41.8. But that's only 2.1% worse. Now, let me explain why this should this should be worrying for Democrats. First off, if they're, if the GOP is under, like, in, in this race, we have to remember, Trump was on the ballot in 2020, obviously. The GOP does significantly better with Trump on the ballot. I mean, like, this is from 2018. So, yeah, obviously, this is a blue wave. Clearly, the Democrats are going to do well there. But still, I mean, like, with, with Trump on the ballot, they do significantly better. So, Trump, first off, we already know, is a very, very good candidate. Or, not a good candidate. He is a very good candidate. He's very, very good um, at getting down, or at helping Republicans down ballot. He's very good. At, or Republicans typically do well with Trump on the ballot. So, first off, we have we have that that they only underperform by two point one percent with Trump off the ballot. That's already that already should probably be worrying for Democrats. But second is that the Democratic Party invested heavily into this. Um, they they invested significantly much or not heavily, but they they invested maybe kind of I don't know. Um, but more I guess not necessarily heavily, but they invested significantly more than the GOP did into this race. So when when there's Democrats investing, pumping money, and, or not I say pumping, when they're putting more money into this race than the GOP is, when they're significantly outraising them, and Trump is off the ballot, and the GOP only underperformed by 2.1%, already that's looking like it's going to be at least an average year, if not a fairly strong year for the GOP. But then we also have to realize that A... They have control of redistricting for the most part. They're probably they might be able to gerrymander themselves in into power just like straight off of that. Like they're only a few seats away. They could do it. I mean, like looking at this, they are only like what um four seats away, four or five seats away. They are they could easily gerrymander themselves back into power, or at least in the house. But they also have the fact that typically midterms are not good for the incumbent party. Yes, Biden is more popular than usual, um, most popular, more popular than most Democrats or incumbents. But still, I mean, like we're probably going to see enough um, anti-Biden. Although to be fair, if the Democrats nominate moderate establishmentarians and GOP, GOP nominate Trumpists, which is what they tend to typically do, um, then it could be good for the Democrats because we're going to see more. Um, College-educated vote share, we're going to see more suburban vote share, um, which could be a fairly strong sign for the Democrats. But still, I mean, like, with, with the fact that it's already, before this, it was already looking like the GOP is going to flip this or flip the House through redistricting and through, um, through, I mean, I guess a lot of Democrats, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, the GOP um, tend to, they did very well in the House, but the Democrats never seem to, like, nominate amazing candidates. I mean, like, in, in 2020, yeah, we ex um, actually expected Democrats to overperform, but I would I would assume that the Democratic Party would nominate candidates that aren't going to lose their seats, even with Trump on the ballot. I mean, like, 
if we go back to New Mexico, we go look at the state, um, I believe the second district. Yeah, the second district. This was a flip. The GOP carried by 7.4%. So, I mean, like, the Democratic Party definitely do have a problem, um, which is underperforming in the House. Like, they did very well in 2018. We already know that it was a blue wave. Um, but I, I see I see this overall being a a fairly strong year for the GOP, along with the fact that the Democrats significantly underperformed in, um, I believe it was sixth, yeah, it was the sixth district, the sixth district, um, special election in Texas. I mean, like the Democrats, just haven't been doing very well in all these special elections, um, and it's 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 looking like they're not going to have a a great year, um, at least in the House in twenty twenty two. I see them probably expanding on their Senate majority, in the Senate, but in the House they are looking. Um, they're looking, it's, it's looking bleak for the Democratic Party. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like below. Stay tuned for my next video tomorrow. Comment your suggestions down below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye!